Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm going to be talking about my thoughts on the XXL freshman class of 2009. Already I see a lot of names I'm more familiar with and am too excited to get into it. Again, I'll be focusing on debut singles and relevancy, but relevancy, relevancy, but this was the year that introduced the freshman freestyle, so I'll be looking at those too. Let's get started. Wale, a name I'm very familiar with through an odd avenue, wrestling. He's a huge WWE fan and seems like a cool dude, but what of his music? His background? Uh, signing with Alito Records in 06. He's three years past freshman status, in my opinion. His debut single, Nike Boots, trapped in, dropped in 08 and is repetitive, but repetition isn't always a bad thing. The guy is still rapping, and there are more people that know him than those who don't. His freestyle had a nice muffled underground feel to it, befitting of a freshman. B.O.B. The Earth is Flat. I still can't believe he said that shit. Like Wale, he was signed in 06, meaning he's also past freshman status. Uh, wreck Your Label's Wet Dream, B.O.B. has that versatile reach, a flow that can appeal to anyone, a style made for the radio, the casual listener. His debut single, Nothing On You, featuring Bruno Mars, decimated the charts and made he and Bruno household names. I can easily say I love this guy and his music. Ask anybody about him, even if they don't know him, they know. All you have to do is hum one of his songs, and it just clicks. Impressive. His freestyle is short, sweet, and to the point, with a clear and concise message to all other rappers. Loved it. Yeah, the freestyles were very personalized this year as well. They different camera angles, they, it, a lot of character. Nowadays, it's just in front of the same fucking background, doing the same shit. Sometimes they'll try to, like, spice it up, but it's it's not like this year. Excuse me. I thought I went more, like, way more in on the fact that B.O.P. B.O.B. said the earth was flat. This is, like, 2016, and it's the beginning of 2016, and he goes, uh, he tweets, I'm about to change, like, I'm about to blow everyone's minds, get ready, nothing will be the same after this, and everyone was like, what the fuck? He hadn't been relevant for a while. Um, like, he, <laughs> he's dropped off. Um, still more relevant than Wale. Like, when you hear Wale or B.O.B., depending on what your um, preference is, but the casual is still like, oh, fucking B.O.B. airplanes, nothing on you. Yeah, that guy, that guy's fucking cool. I got the magic in me. Like, fuck yeah. Um, he, he still fell off. And he blamed record labels for being racist and shit. And all that kind of stuff. And say, like, okay, cool. But he said, the world will never be the same. Then he said, the earth is flat. And here's my proof. And he had left like a Twitter thread. And his dumbass fans, the casuals, actually like, oh my god, he must be onto something because he's famous. No, he's not onto anything. And anyone that refuted him were fucking idiots and pieces of shit. <sighs> Come on, Bob. Charles Hamilton. Another name I'm familiar with through the song he did with fellow XXL freshman B.O.B. and Asher Roth titled Change Gonna Come. This guy was another promising prospect. Underground in 05, album debut in 08. So in other words, another freshman who started earlier than his induction. This shit really bothered me. Um, it doesn't as much now because nobody fucking debuts the same year uh, as a freshman. Maybe the year before. Maybe. And that's, that's still... Freshman status, I feel. Um, but, like, this shit really bothered me big time back then. His debut single, Brooklyn Girls, is a really nice track. As for relevancy, he's still releasing music. I just don't hear too much about him. His freestyle wasn't bad. It just fails to stand out. Yeah, Charles Hamilton battle-wrapped his, like, baby mama. And she, like, aborted a baby. Either, like, I don't know if he, like... She did she have to get the like was did she have to get the abortion? Touchy subject, but like this the the footage is out there. They're battle rapping. He's like, just like he's like we'll abort that just like that baby. Oh, we won't talk about that. And then she like sucker punched him, and that like that sucker punch killed his career. Um, after that it was nothing, nada. 
Um, at least that's the general consensus online. A lot of people feel like that really killed everything. He he ate that shit. He was just like, mm. he's like, okay, calm down, like, chill, chill, chill. Asher Roth. Hey, first white guy in an XXL freshman class. Like Hamilton, Roth was underground in 05 and released his first album in 08. I remember this guy from his debut single, I Love College, which is garbage with a catchy chorus. He got way better, though, but his relevancy is damn near absent. At least he's got that dumbass single, right? Shit, his basic-ass freestyle killed that lame-ass track. Corey Guns. Signed in 2001 at the age of 14, Corey wouldn't release any music until 2005. With no singles to his name at all, I listened to the first track on his first mixtape. I said mixtape. Mixtape, The Apprentice, Volume 1, titled Setup. It surprised me. I really, I actually really dug it. He's yet to release his debut album, so relevancy is questionable. His freestyle is actually really good. I have no idea what he was talking about, but hey, it sounds good. Corey Guns, like, has he done anything yet? So if he was signed in 2005... He signed in 2001, didn't release music until 2005. It's 20, It's 2009 when he's inducted. 2017, he still hadn't had a debut album? Relevancy is questionable? Relevancy is not non-existent. What are you talking about? He's a good feature artist. It's cool. I have no idea what he's talking about, but hey, it sounds good. Blue, B-L-U. Um, the, the earliest this guy put any music out was 2003. But he didn't have a solo single until solo single until 2011. The single "Lemonade" was something I really was something I really I liked because of its old school sound. He's still making music, so he's active. Just haven't heard of him. His freestyle was beast. I loved it. Mickey Fax, um, F A C T Z, Fax, debuting in 2006 with his mixtape "In Search of the Nerd." I've only heard this guy's name uttered here and there with no singles. I turned to the first track on his aforementioned mixtape. The track, Mickey James, is a lot better than I thought it would be. He's still making music, haven't heard a lot from him, however. Uh, that freestyle, wow, I felt the flames there. Why have I not heard this guy spit before? I, I haven't heard since. Relevancy, who the fuck is Mickey Facts? Who... Is Mickey Fax? I have no idea. <sighs> Forgot to mention. Where is this shit? Is it photos? Posted by me. Really? It's two days ago. That's not the one I'm talking about. Really? <laughs> this is the boring part of the a video where I'm just looking for that one. There we go. No. Where's the one that I shared? Not that one. Getting close. Damn, really? It said, uh, freshman class of 09, much better covers than 07 covers, because there's three different covers, and a better group as well. In the first one, we got Corey Guns, Blue, and Mickey Fax. Um, Blue, I don't even remember either. Um, this one is Wale, B.O.B., Asher Roth, and Charles Hamilton. The best four, the most relevant four, I feel like. Um... You know, I said the best four. I spoke too soon because there's Ace Hood, Currency, and Kid Cudi in this one. Um, really great, really great covers. Um, 
moving on to those next three, Ace Hood. Following an injury that would shatter his chances of an NFL career, Ace Hood, then in the 10th grade, decided to become a rapper. After some shameless self-promotion in 2006, the rookie was eventually signed in 08. <clears throat> his debut single, Cash Flow, featuring Rick Ross and T-Pain, is your run of the is your run of the mill gangster rap. As soon as I heard "We the best," I thought, "Ah, fucking shit, here we go." But Ace showed potential here for sure. He definitely stood out among the bigger names in a good way, even with those corny ass punchlines. He's still making music, and I've heard his name before. What the fuck with that freestyle? That was godly compared to that basic ass single. Wow. Currency. I know the name Currency. Old Curran Dollar Sign Y over here was signed to Masterpiece No Limit Records back in 2002 as a member of rap group The 504 Boys. Two years later, he'd signed with Cash Money Records as a solo artist, begging the question of why he's labeled as a freshman five fucking years later. That's sad, almost as the class of uh, 07. His debut single, Where Did Cash At, featuring Lil Wayne and Remy Ma, is hype as, is hype as shit, even if Currency and Remy sound like different shades of Wheezy. He's still rapping, though. I've never heard of him before. I've grown to like his, style, uh, his type of rap, and Currency excels not only in that single, but his freestyle as well. Kid Cudi. Oh, yeah. Formerly my second favorite. Mm, excuse me. Fucking shit. I was wondering, I was like, my stomach hurts. Like, why is my stomach hurt? And why is my breathing off? Formerly my second favorite rapper, he opened my mind to many different avenues to be explored in rap. Despite trying to make a name for himself since 2003, Cuddy didn't have his music hit the ears of future fans until 2008 when he dropped his first mixtape, A Kid Named Cuddy. His debut single, Day and Night, annoyed the ever-loving fuck out of me for being so overplayed and, at the time, overrated, but it eventually grew on me. Cuddy, man, he's just on a whole nother level. Um, despite his break from rap due to depression, Cuddy still remains relevant as fuck. His freestyle was mumbled and distorted, unfortunately. It's a shame because it really doesn't show what Cuddy can actually do. It was really hard for me to place these guys from best to worst this time around. The talent was both overwhelming and overflowing, and even though none of the freshmen actually debuted in 2009, they were all a lot closer to the mark than 07's class. Kid Cuddy, I, this dude's in, in my top 10. B.O.B., Corey Guns, Mickey Fax, Currency, Wale, Charles Hamilton, Blue, Ace Hood, and Asher Roth. Um, judging off like the freestyles and like and everything, it sounds like Kid Cudi shouldn't be as high as he is. He should not be number one. But again, this is my opinion. These are my <laughs> these are the rappers that I like versus whatever the fuck. I love Asher Roth now, so I'm actually surprised he's not higher. But I was actually thinking about the list and at this time. Asher Roth was fucking garbage. He was so fucking garbage. He pioneered a whole new style of rap. Frat rap. Which is fucking garbage. It's horrible. Um, I love college. It's so terrible. Uh, one of my friends, Marco, said, Being signed don't mean you out. I said, too true. I've learned that from reading, reading up on these artists. He said, Bob over Cuddy to me. Guns can, can guns can just rap. No creativity or song skills. Wale is too boring. Currency has a huge fan base. And Charles Hamilton shouldn't have ex shouldn't have accepted the list. I said, that's what's up. Uh, my friend Teray um, said, man, when Ace Hood hit the radio with Cash Flow, I fell out. That was clearly the hype song for me. Still got it on CD. Kid Cuddy didn't have hype songs, but his flow was good when smoking that herb mood hit. Similar to my guy, Frank Ocean. Chill music. I thought Charles Hamilton would have gone a lot farther than what he has. Much disappointment. He had that song with sonic rings, sound effect, effects, and I was hooked. But he a ghost now. Everyone else is good. Wale has ma really made a name for himself. Back during the BET Awards or VMAs with a song about police brutality during the large hype of the Black Lives Matter movement. I appreciate these artists. This is the freshman class I was introduced to when I was first told about XXL. I said it's a pretty good class. And then that's it. Um, those are the thoughts. Those are my thoughts on the XXL freshman class in 2009. Sorry that I fucking like am like out of it with this video. Um, because 2009 deserves it so much more, in my opinion, than 07. Um, they're not the best class 
overall. I will say that. Spoiler alert for the future. Um, but this is like a very, very strong list. A very, very strong class. Um, and if it's uh, your favorite class, I have no beef with you. That's a great choice. Um, but you guys have a good one. Take care.